like at night, that's when everything goes through my head. I'm like, yeah. I wish I could go back. You're held in isolation, right? And then you come out to testify? Yeah. I looked outside of the courthouse and there was a lot of people I recognized. It was gonna be really hard for me. Just yeah. Whatever happened, happened. And you're doing the right thing now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm glad I came up here. I'm glad I got a chance to see you. Yeah. You have a kid that's in there that just got caught up in something that he shouldn't have got caught up with. Went into gangs not really knowing what was gonna happen. And then it's hard for me to hear the kids just kind of glorifying that whole gang lifestyle and that whole violence thing. Some of the kids still don't get it. My life growing up was the furthest thing from a white picket since we lived on a strawberry farm. And at the beginning of the month, there was food at the house. At the end of the month, there wasn't. My mom was really, really angry. And at times, she was physically abusive. And I was afraid of her. In my family, there's six of us, and we have five different fathers, men that um, were affiliated with gangs, violent men. I remember when things were so hard for me, I would just take a ball and dribble it through these strawberry fields. It was the only place that I felt safe. We begin this afternoon on the Crime Watch and another deadly night. Two people are murdered. Teenagers shot in the neck in critical gang condition. members demanded to know their gang ties, stabbing the 17-year-old 10 times. A teenager was shot and killed at a party Saturday Last night. Last night's double murder, a gang hit, plain and simple. When I was recruited to be a probation officer, I said, there's no way. Those people arrested most of my family. And don't identify yourself or own anything that would identify you as a gang member. That means colors, numbers, letters, things like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? But the probationer at that time said, we need people like you from the community that have survived, that really support them in doing positive things. What do we do to help you so that the DA doesn't see you in adult court here in a few months, or you know, your family has to bury you, right? Yeah. So what do we do? As a probation officer, one of the things I asked the young people is, what do you like to do? And so I had about six or seven kids say, I like to play soccer. And I said, that's great. Where do you play at? I don't. Good speed, you guys, good speed. Keep going, Juan, keep going, keep going. We started out with six, seven boys on probation that were um, high risk gang affiliated, both Norteños, which are red, and Sureños, which are blue. We as the Aztecas, uniting the gangs, wear the color purple. Hey, okay, look at this is what's up, is we did have an issue two weeks ago with some violent behavior. It's not gonna be accepted. You bring gang clothing, if you guys are violent, anything like that, that's it. You're gonna get an automatic, automatic one game suspension. You're big boys, man. We're here to play soccer, we're not here to do anything else. That's what we're here to do. The Aztecas play in an extremely competitive league, and they want to win. They want to make it to the playoffs. It's what they work up all season long to, and it's inspiring them to identify as something that's positive. Beautiful, Willie. Beautiful, Willie. Yeah! Pisa la cell, pisa la! But these kids are rival gang members being on the same team. It's a struggle for them. ever that we've made it this far. I'm really proud of you guys. The championships totally matter to these kids, but either way, I want them to walk off the field feeling good about themselves. In high school, I was a very angry kid. There was times on the street I physically had to protect myself, but I learned to take my aggression out on the soccer field. When the whistle blew, the world stopped. I was happy. And at one point, my coach came to me and he was like, girl, you can go all the way. And it made me want to prove myself. It was my ticket out. As a senior, I got a full ride to San Francisco State University. But on a muddy, rainy day, I was slide tackled from the back and I blew out my knee. 
and my scholarship was pulled. Sometimes I think to myself, what if I wouldn't have hurt my knee? Where would I be? What would have happened? I see, dribble, 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 dribble. My dream now is for one of my daughters to play on the U.S. national soccer team. I was playing soccer with the boys. They wanted to not let me play. And you played anyways? Mm-hmm, because anybody can play. Anybody can play. Do you love to play? Then you should play. I do everything that I do because I really am motivated to help young people be successful. Okay, soccer says touch your knees. Soccer says pull back, step over. Good job, good control. There you go, talk to her, Natalie, so she can hear you too. I also want my girls to grow up in a community that they can be proud of, where they can feel safe. Okay, girls, listen, listen. I have to go because my boys team oh, yeah. plays in the final tonight, so I'm leaving to go over there, okay? Oh. One, two, three. You guys can do it. You guys can do it. This team hasn't lost. They're going to lose tonight. We're going to beat them. You guys have to work like a team and pass the ball around. There's no turning back. It's do or die. That's it, David. Sierra, David. Sierra. Nice. Jose, it's OK. Plenty of time. Shake it off. Soccer can make a difference in people's lives because it's about connection. It's not just about kicking a ball around. Start it up, start it up! Shoot it! You have 30 seconds! 30 seconds, 30 seconds, Adrian! It's about feeling like you're successful and being part of a family. Soccer saved my life, and now I teach soccer just to give back what somebody gave to me.